Fred has been struggling with stress and visits his doctor for help. The doctor has heard about a new program which uses a type of talking therapy called Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, or CBT. Before the doctor refers Fred to the program, she wants to make sure that it's effective at treating stress. She looks at the evidence from a recent clinical trial called the CBT Stress Trial, which looked at this very topic. The trial randomly split 100 people into two groups. The first group was assigned to the new CBT program. The second group was assigned to no treatment at all. At the end of the trial, researchers compared stress scores between those who had CBT and those who did not. So, according to the trial, how effective was CBT at treating stress? And does the doctor think it will help Fred? Well, it depends. During the trial, 10 participants began taking anti-anxiety medication alongside their CBT. As you can imagine, taking this medication could impact a person's stress level, making it difficult to know if any improvement is due to the CBT or their extra medication. This is an example of an intercurrent event, something that happens during a trial which affects our understanding of how well the treatment worked. Intercurrent events are a normal part of a trial. However, there are different research questions we can ask depending on how we account for this intercurrent event, which means that researchers need to decide which question is most useful. The research question is called an estimand. First, researchers might want to know how useful CBT would be if participants had not taken the extra medication. They could do this using statistical calculations to work out what stress scores these participants would have had if they had not taken the medication. Researchers might instead want to know how much CBT reduced stress scores before these participants started taking extra medication. They could do this by only using the stress scores collected until they started the extra medication. Alternatively, researchers might want to know how well CBT worked only in those who wouldn't go on to need extra medication. Because they don't always know who these participants are, they need to use statistical calculations to try and work it out. Maybe the researchers think needing medication represents a poor outcome. They might then assign these participants a bad stress score. Finally, the researchers could decide that it doesn't matter if some participants take extra medication during the trial. Maybe this sort of thing is normal in the treatment of stress. In that case, they can analyse all stress scores from all participants regardless of the extra medication. Each strategy answers a slightly different research question and may lead to a slightly different conclusion about how effective the new CBT program is it's important to decide at the trial outset which question is most relevant and therefore which estimand researchers should use. If the researchers running the CBT stress trial hadn't made it clear which research question they answered, it may be difficult for Fred and his doctor to understand whether the CBT program is right for him. This is why estimands are becoming more commonly used. They are a way of describing the research question so that people like Fred and his doctor can understand what trial results mean for them and make better decisions about the most suitable treatment.